This video is sponsored by Dorico. With Make Music announcing that they're ending support and development for Finale this year, tons of users are left flailing for where to go next. I switched from Sibelius to Dorico several years ago and I love it. But it wasn't a seamless transition. So today I'm going to show you how I suggest you pick up a new notation software and I'm going to show you how I suggest you do it in Dorico. Plus, Dorico is kind enough to partner up with me on this video and offer a free license to Dorico Pro 5 to one lucky viewer. Details on that later on in the video. Let's get started. So when you're learning a new software, the first thing you should do is to let go of your assumptions for how a notation software should work. It's a bad idea to assume or even expect that the system that you're used to is the way it should be across all other platforms. That just isn't the case. It's like learning a new language. You can't think that the grammar structure and rules of the language that you speak are the way it functions in another language. That just isn't the case. It's okay to want those things, but that just isn't reality. So as soon as you let go of that, it'll be much easier to switch and to learn something new. I don't mean that your muscle memory isn't worth anything. I just mean that you have to be in the right headspace for all this. Now, I've opened up a blank project here in Dorico, and right off the bat, you see a few things. This is where you set up your project for the first time. Now, in Dorico, a concept that may be new to you and was new to me when I first started was the concept of players, flows and layouts. So right off the bat, you can see start your project by adding some players. We see three different options. So a single player, you can think of as a person in real life who might hold one or two or several instruments. So for example, it could be a flute player who's also holding a piccolo and they switch back and forth over the course of the piece or a percussionist who has to play triangle for a few beats, then move on to the tambourine and then the bass drum and then the marimba, that player can be holding all of those instruments in Dorico. A section player is just a group of people who are playing the exact same thing. Think of a violin section or a cello section in an orchestra. And then finally, an ensemble is a way to add multiple instruments at the same time to your project. Then we have flows, which to me was the most mind exploding thing when I came across Dorico. It's sort of difficult to describe what a flow is in one phrase, but basically, if you have multiple movements in a work, you can add flows and each one of those flows can be a separate movement with its own instruments, but still contained in a greater whole. Or each flow can be a song in a songbook or a musical. You can have tons of flows and you can reorder them as you need to. Or each flow can be a cue of a film, or you can add a flow to have as your sketch pad where you write musical ideas and then you copy paste them into your main flow that you're working with. The possibilities here are really endless. For this work, I am only working with one flow. Uh, no need to add more. And then finally, the layouts panel here is just for all the different maybe parts. So the full score, parts for players. You can customize your own layouts. So you can have a score with a piano reduction of an orchestral part plus just the choir for a rehearsal or anything else you need like that. So that's a quick rundown of setup menu. By the way, this isn't going to be a detailed, detailed tutorial of how to use Dorico. I'm just going to talk through how I suggest you pick up a new notation software using Dorico. Um, so I might gloss over a few things, but I'll suggest ways that you can learn more about each individual thing as we go through them. So today I suggest when you're learning a new software like this is to start with just one instrument. And I suggest you start with a piano. So I can press the add single player button. I can come down here under the players panel and select the single player button, or I can use key commands, which is what I'm going to do today because that's how I really fly around or go using key commands. So I'll hit shift P to add a single player. I'll type in piano, hit enter, and a piano has been populated. You'll also see in the layouts, a piano part has been added. Frankly, I don't need one for this. So I'll just select it, hit delete, and it's gone. Okay, so now that we have a piano part, this brings me to my next point when learning a new notation software, and that's input an already existing piece of music. If you try composing something right out of the gate, I think there are just too many things that you need to be thinking about that don't really help facilitate you learning a new software like Dorico. When you're inputting notes that sort of already exist, you can just focus on where everything is, how to input all of those things, how to edit the music to be the way that it needs to be without having to be in a creative mode. Everything will just be much more manageable. Another reason I suggest you 
use a piano, by the way, is because it's one instrument, so not very overwhelming, but it uses two clefs, two staves, uses multiple voices, you can input chords, dynamics, uh, articulation markings, all sorts of things in just one instrument, and I find that to be very general, so you can learn quite a bit just working with the piano. Now, there's a great guide that Dorico provides called Dorico First Steps. It's sort of a tutorial on how to start uh, working in Dorico, so a tour through the interface and using the software. This isn't going to be a one-to-one -one copy of that. However, I will be using the same piano piece that they suggest you input in that tutorial. So today we'll be inputting Walter Capricin number no. two by Dora Pejacevic. Here's a copy of the piano part right here. You can see that it goes through a ton of different things, including notes that go across staves, uh, dynamics that go in all kinds of directions, tuplets, tempo changes, tempo markings, articulation, slurs, all, all kinds of things. And the tutorial goes through all of this stuff, which is really great. Today, for these purposes, I'll only go through maybe eight to 10 measures of inputting this music. So go check out the rest of the first steps guide for a more in-depth guide through all of this. Okay, so back to Dorico, let's start inputting some music. So let's go into write mode, which is where you'll be inputting and editing notes. And you'll notice a few things. Firstly, we have a title up here and the piano part right here. So let's input some information. I'll hit command I for project info, and this is what we get. So we have a bunch of these boxes and we'll just populate these with what we deem uh, necessary. So let me title this Walter Preachin number two. I'll go down to composer. I'll write in Dora Pejace. Let me add the proper characters. She was a uh, Croatian composer, I believe. Cevic. Okay. Let's start inputting some music. In Dorico, basically two modes you work in, you're either inputting music or you're editing music. You can double click on the staff, you can hit enter, you can hit shift N, you can hit this start note input button. All of those things will invoke the uh, note input mode. I usually just hit enter. You can also hit enter to come out of it. You know you are in note input mode if you see this little note head down here, a little rhythm grid and this long orange line, which is called the carrot. Not carrot as in carrot, carrot as in like this symbol. Now you can add notes if you want to. I have a MIDI keyboard to my side here. Uh, you can add anything you want. And then you can add key signatures and uh, time signatures later. I prefer to do that at the beginning though. So let me get rid of all of that stuff. Let's add first a key signature. So you'll see to the right here, these are toolboxes for adding any kinds of uh, musical things. So I can click this key signatures one, I can add tons of sharps, I can add tons of flats to whatever it is, I can click that and it'll add it, which is super valid. Or you can do what I like to do and use popovers. Popovers for me are another way of just zooming around in Dorico. To invoke a popover, it's usually shift and then a letter for whatever popover you need. In this case, for key signature, I'm gonna hit shift K. Now this little box has appeared with the same icon as the key signatures panel off to the right. In here, I can input anything I want, like a flat, the lowercase b for flat. Hit enter, suddenly I have four flats. Or I can input a lowercase f for F minor. That'll add four flats as well. Or I can do four F for flats. That'll insert the same thing. Next thing I wanna add is the time signature. So in the piece, looks like we're in three, four. So let me go back to Dorico. I'll select, now I'll hit shift M for meter. Shift T is reserved for tempo. So you can see I have the icon for the time signatures panel off to the side. I can just type in three slash four. Boom, now I'm in three, four. Let's add some more measures. So I already have three. This is based on the, the notes that I put at the beginning. That's why there are three measures there already. But uh, I can hit shift B for bars and I can add, let's say, let's add five. Now I have eight measures. Okay, let's input some music now. So I'll enter a uh, note input mode. Looks like the bass clef uses pretty much quarter notes for a while. I'm going to go ahead and insert those first. I'm gonna use my MIDI keyboard to do that. Okay, that 
that's eight measures, that's enough. Now let's select the treble staff and go into note input mode. This time I'll use my QWERTY keyboard instead of my MIDI keyboard to show you how that works. You know that you're in input mode because of all the orange that has appeared, but also this rhythm grid is in play. This rhythm grid allows you to move around freely in the measure to insert music at any point within that measure. In the first measure, I don't need to insert a rest. I'll just go ahead and go to the second beat. Now, I know that I need eighth notes before I put this in, so I can come over here, select eighth notes, or I can hit number five on my uh, number row or eighth notes, and I'll just type an F. That's in the right spot, then a G, then an A, then a B, and then a G. Now, I'm out of note input mode, this last G looks like it needs to be a half note and it needs to be dotted. I'm going to select seven for half note and then I'll hit the period button to add a rhythm dot. So this brings me to my next point. Try to resist the urge to change the default key commands for the new software. I know that this is unlikely to be the way that you're used to working or even want to work. Try sticking with it for a while. All of the key commands are laid out very logically across the keyboard in Dorico, and I like the way that they function. So they sort of work together in a certain way. Spend time getting to know the layout, all the key commands, how they all work. And then after maybe a few months, you really feel like it's not sticking feel free to change the key commands, but for the very beginning, try to get used to the new way of doing things. Now, if you want a chance to win a free license to Dorico Pro 5, all you have to do is the following. First, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and the official Dorico YouTube channel. A link to that will be in the description down below so you know exactly the channel that you need to subscribe to. Then, leave a like on this video. Finally, leave a comment saying done so that I know that you did the previous two steps and then answer the following question. What do you intend to use Dorico for? Are you composing for a percussion ensemble, for choir, for big band? Are you arranging? Are you scoring? A little bit of everything. Just tell me what it is you do. The deadline for this is September 7th, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and a winner will be randomly selected out of all of those users who have done the steps that I described and I'll post who that winner is on my community tab here on YouTube on my Instagram page and I'll reply to their comments so that they don't miss it. If I don't hear back for a while, a new winner will be chosen. Then I'll give instructions on what to do next so that you get your free copy. By the way, I'm also running this competition on my Instagram page at Ernesto Composer. So if you want a double entry, do it here on YouTube and follow the instructions that I'll post on my Instagram over there for maybe two chances to win. Now there are other powerful features in Dorico that I really love that we didn't go over today like condensing, uh, percussion kits, instrument filters, filtering, editing music with uh, lock to duration and insert mode. The list goes on and on, but you'll start coming across those features as you start working with larger groups of, of instruments. Again, check out the Dorco First Steps guide to see a detailed overview of how to do all of this stuff. Now, my last piece of advice is patience is key practice is necessary. It's not easy to learn a new way of doing something when you're so used to doing something a certain way for so long. But when you're put in a situation like where the software you're using suddenly becomes unsupported, then changes just have to be made. So I really do feel for everybody that's been put in this position. As of the recording of this video, Make Music has offered a free license to Finale version 27 with the Prosgrade discount that they're offering to Dorico so that you can export your projects in Music XML 4.0, which is the latest version of Music XML. So that exports a lot more musical information in it, which Dorico can then use to interpret your music in its own native format. And Dorico does a really great job of interpreting all of that stuff too. There's also a great video by Kevin Lynch where he goes over how to export all of your finale files to music XML in one go, rather than going into every single one, one at a time and exporting it and it taking forever, especially if you have hundreds or even thousands of old finale files that you need to at least have an archive of. So I'll link that video below too. Like I said, I highly suggest you go through this process of learning a new notation software, heeding the advice that I've given as someone who's moved from one notation software that I had been using for, I don't know, seven years before I moved to Dorico. And I've been using Dorico for four years now, and it's uh, been great. You just don't want the added frustration of opening your music XML file that you had in Finale. Some things just don't look the same, 
and you're trying to figure out where everything is in Dorico, take your time, take it one step at a time, learn Dorico a little bit uh, better first, then start opening your files in so you know more what to do. And you'll also find a lot of other Dorico users who are passionate about Dorico and they just really wanna help. They want other people to enjoy using Dorico too. So I'm sure if you ask a question, either here in the comments or elsewhere, you'll get a lot of helpful feedback if you need something. Just don't forget to be respectful about it. Okay, so comment down below if you need any more details on something that I glossed over today. I know I didn't really go into the nitty gritty stuff, but hopefully you got something out of this, whether you're considering moving to Dorico or not, just learning how to do it. Don't forget about the giveaway if you want a chance to win a free copy of Dorico Pro 5. Just do the steps that I outlined before. That's it for today. Thank you so very much for watching, and as always, take care.